Hello! Pindutin ang like, share, at subscribe. At pati na rin yung bell icon para masabihan kayo pag may bago akong video. Mabuhay! Ako si Emir at maligayang pagbalik sa aking palatuntunang Balik Tanaw. May dalawang bagay akong gustong linawin tungkol doon sa review ko ng kantang dati. Una, may editing error sa video na yon. Dapat ganito yung magiging itsura nung isang parte ng review. Uh, so, yung singers dito ay si uh, Sam Concepcion. Hindi. Uh, Sam Concepcion, hindi Sam Milby. Baba. Hindi, hindi. Yam yan eh. Yam Concepcion yan eh. Sam Concepcion. Yan. Okay, good. Pero sa sobrang kasabikan dahil unang video ko ito, hindi ko nakita yung part na yon Hindi ko naayos. So, at least nakita nyo na ako ano dapat ang itsura niya. Pangalawa, sabi ko sa review ko ng kantang dati na ang balak kong tignan sa channel na ito ay puro lumang Pinoy media. Medyo stretch itong pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Hindi siya ganun kaluma, pero luma na rin siya. Lumabas itong kantang to mga July ngayong taon. Pero may isa pang bagay akong gustong sagutin. May isa akong gustong maintindihan. Kasi di ko gets eh. I don't get the appeal. Our video today is for both fans and non-fans. For non-fans to learn with me and for fans to correct me and to add insights to the discussion that we will be having in this video. Noong September, habang nagre-review ako para sa bar, sinend sa akin nung kabatch ko at kapwa ko rin nagre-review para sa exam na yon, yung practice video para sa unang Pilipinong K-pop group sa Pinas. Tatawagin ko tong P-pop kasi K-pop inspired Pinoy pop. Uh, gets, gets ba? K-pop, P-pop. Hindi ko sigurado kung tama yung pagkakagamit ko ng mga terms na yon. So again, uh, comment kayo kung mali yung paggamit ko ng term na pipa. Basahin ko yung message na sinend sa akin ng sender kasabay ng kanta na ire-review ko ngayon. So, quick kwento. There's this Filipino group na they're like a K-pop group and they're really good at singing and dancing. Tapos yung lyrics ng song nila, Taglish. More Filipino though, siguro 75 to 85 percent. Tapos nagulat ako na hindi siya nakaka-cringe. So I followed their channel as a sort of recognition na ang galing nila. And I want to support Filipino artists na want to venture out and do new things. Tapos nagulat ako. When I followed them, they had 11,000 subscribers sa YouTube. Ngayon, 304,000 na. Nag-viral kasi yung dance practice video nila, Laughing with Tears Emoticon. Natuwa ako kasi Filipino people are stunning them na kasi legit galing nila. Ha ha ha! Tapos today, gumawa sila ng two times speed dance practice video nila. OMG, ang galing nila. Laughing with Tears Emoticon. They're actually better than some K-pop groups plus... They sound great live. Sorry, natuwa lang ako kapag people look at talent instead of their looks. Heart, heart, heart. Kasi they're not as glamorous as other groups but they're super talented. So ang saya ko nung binabasa ko yung comments. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, we're gonna go up. Ibibigay ko ang aking puso. Sa pag-abot ng pangarap, di hihinto. Hanak kong harap, pinalahat, yeah. Kahit pa imposible. Yeah, we're gonna go up. Today, we're reviewing Go Up by SB19. Una kong pinanood yung nag-viral nilang practice video. Napansin ko, at yun yung sinabi ko dun sa sender nung kantang to, malinis yung steps nila. Tapos sinend din niya sa akin yung music removed o MR version. Ang naging observation ko, sakto sa tono yung boses nila. Hindi sintonado. 
galing. Para sa review na ito, ang pinanood ko ay yung music video. Ganon pa rin yung comment ko tungkol dun sa steps nila. Magaling, maganda yung dance steps. Lyrics-wise, Go Up is an empowerment song, an expression of confidence. Despite adversity, there is no retreat, no surrender. We can do it. Wikang Filipino yung kanta, pero may halong konting English. Suabe at hindi jaring yung code switching o pagpapalit ng wika. Nakatulong siguro na konting-konti lang yung English. Um, yung naalala ko ngayon ay yung salitang ye na nasa chorus. Hindi mo siya mapapansin halos o hindi mo mapapansin na nagpalit ng wika. Siguro nga 75 to 85% ng kantang to Pilipino. Uh, maliit na bagay pero nitpicking. Hindi ko alam bakit Garuda yung pinili nilang ibon na ilagay sa kantang to. Bakit kaya hindi Agila? Ang Garuda kasi simbolo ng Indonesia. Ang Agila ay simbolo ng Pilipinas. Uh, pareho na ibon, pareho ang tatlong syllables. But, uh, you know, I don't mind. Energetic yung beat, sakto sa lyrics. Para siya ang Eye of the Tiger. Yung tan, 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 tan. If you are going to make a fight song, an empowerment song, the beat should be energetic. It should get you pumped up. Pero itong go up, uh, hindi ko siguro to sasayawin, kahantahin, at irarap mag-isa. This uh, song is not for a one-man band. It's for a group. I like uplifting songs. I like empowerment songs. My YouTube playlist is full of empowerment songs. So I should like SB19's Go Up. It was in my playlist from September up to mid-October. But I removed it because I'm going to be honest about this. I don't enjoy it. I don't get it. I want to know, however, why I don't get it. Dahil ba hindi ko gets ang peepop? Nakatali ba ang peepop sa K-pop? Nakatali ba ang appeal ng peepop sa K-pop? Kasi hindi ko rin gets ang K-pop. Wala sa timog ang interes ko. Tanong mo ako tungkol dyan, wala akong masasabi. I will defer to anyone who is an expert on the subject and I will just listen intently. Quiet na lang ako. Pero tanong mo ako tungkol sa hilaga? Nako, mahaba-habang usapan yan. To be fair, I did some research on K-pop. I watched music reviews from Super Junior 10 years ago to BTS the present. He said K-pop covers a wide demographic, not just teenage girls, but a wide audience. He said most K-pop groups are run by established entertainment companies, with BTS being the only group, at least a popular group, that is independently run. K-pop is more open to Western influences, hence the mix of trap, EDM, and the Korean flavor of music. K-pop emerged because of South Korea's international marketing, coupled with the rise of YouTube as a music platform. Why is K-pop popular then? Is it because of the music, the lyrics, the dance steps, the aesthetic, the, the personalities of the idols, their love lives? I want to understand. I want to get it. Kaya nagpatulong na ako dun sa nag-send sa akin nung practice video ng Go Up ng SB19 nung September. To my viewers, please welcome Mikey. Hello. So Mikey, I have a set of questions about K-pop, about P-pop, about SB19. Uh, simula natin siguro sa SB19 mismo. 
Uh, gusto mo ba yung go up ng SB19 at bakit mo siya gusto? I really like SB19's go up. Maganda yung pagkagawa ng kanta, relatable yung lyrics, tugma yung lyrics sa tempo and beat. Hindi kasi siya pilit pakinggan. I think my times kasi na we try to force the genre so we could go with the trend. Pero listening to the song, kahit na taglish siya, it sounds organic. Hindi siya nakaka-cringe like some attempts ng ibang artist. I think talaga what contributes to this great synergy then between the lyrics and the melody is that yung Tagalog language or yung Filipino language was embraced well into the song. May mga malalalim na words at may mga everyday words. And I think um, they really embrace the Filipino aspect of the song well. Totoo naman na may English words din yung song. Pero sa tingin ko, kung iisipin natin, di ba parang sa araw-araw naman na usapan, parang nagmi-mix in din talaga yung English words. So parang naging taglish yung huling produkto. So I guess it doesn't sound as weird or foreign kasi it follows a syntax na we're familiar with. Tapos, it also helps na they're aware of what they are and who they're not. Parang totoo na K-pop yung inspiration, pero alam nila na yung target audience nila firsthand is yung mga Filipino people talaga. And they've been really vocal about that. And I guess, ganun din nagsimula naman yung K-pop. At first, yung target nila was the local market, then they expanded internationally. So I think, should SB19 continue to grow, they too can breach the international market and introduce the Filipino language and culture the way K-pop has done for the Korean language and culture din. At saka, another plus for me is yung showmanship na pinapakita ng SB19 when performing the song na go up. Kasi marami silang performances sa iba-ibang platforms recently. Sabay-sabay talaga sila gumalaw, tapos they sing live, tapos napaka-powerful talaga ng performance nila. They're very open then that they achieve this work through hard work. I think um, lagi na lang sinasabi na um, lalo na with Go Up, parang 1,000 times nila pinractice yon, And it's refreshing to see that hard work translate to great performances. Nakakaga naman naod kasi nakikita mo yung enthusiasm nila and nakaka-warm ng heart to see them strive so hard. Tsaka lastly, I think the lyrics was really well thought out in a way na it really mirrors their mindset. Parang how they want to run towards their goal and achieve their dreams at all costs. And at the same time, it also strikes a chord with the audience. Kasi in a way, haven't we, parang ba? haven't we all been there? Running towards a goal, reaching our goal, and whatnot. Ano ba ang appeal ng K-pop in general? Sa tingin ko, yung main appeal ng K-pop is the way they package their idols in general. Although I wouldn't say na K-pop is contained only to idol groups, I think mas sikat talaga yung idol groups kaysa sa ibang Korean singers and artists. And ang holistic talaga ng packaging nila. Magaling sumayaw, kumanta, guapo o maganda sila. Tapos yung personalities pa nila sobrang relatable. Yung music naman na nilalabas nila, kahit hindi mo naiintindihan, it invokes a certain emotion. And I think this is where their years of training comes in. It's not just a matter of singing or dancing. They show a certain level of showmanship and performance na feel mo pulido at nakakabighani sila panoorin. Parang feel mo gets mo na sinasabi nila, even without looking into the lyrics, kasi dama mo. Tapos sabay-sabay pa sila, tapos confident sa galaw nila, tapos they look good while doing it. Overall, it creates this effect na namamangha ka talaga. Pero I think, as a long-term fan of K-pop, K-pop talaga has evolved from just watching these people performing to being on a journey with them, parang watching them improve and grow from their debut days to their present. Now, ngayon, may social media na, so parang naging two-way na din yung interaction. Di ka na lang nanonood. It feels like the, these people who are so good at what they're doing has a certain connection to you, kahit na malayo pa kayo sa isa't isa. So parang social media in a way has brought K-pop far and wide and at the same time lessen the gap between idol groups mem- idol group members and the audience. Another cool thing about K-pop din kasi is they're changing concepts. Ang galing kasi yung concepts you never think of come up tapos sometimes yung mga tingin mo nobody can pull off once gawin ng mga K-pop idols magbabago isip mo. 
di ka na mapapagod panoorin sila kasi feel mo each time may comeback yung isang group. They have evolved talaga into a new version of themselves. Parang they present to you a new side of themselves. Tapos, dahil iba-iba yung concepts nila, ang dami din nilang subject matter na natatakil. At some point, makakarlate ka din talaga kasi nga, ang dami nilang natatakil na subject matters. Tapos, whether it's about life, love, dreams, at iba pa, parang it really strikes a chord. Tapos, ang maganda pa, they present all these concepts in a unique way that moves their audience. Kaya people who watch them can't help but be amazed. Anong mga K-pop group ang fan ka? Ako, I stan a lot of groups. Pero, I really like EXO, ICON, NCT, BLACKPINK, SUPER JUNIOR, ONE US, DAY6, THE ROSE. Tsaka marami pa talagang iba. <laughs> Tapos, in general talaga, gusto ko talaga yung K-pop. I actually also listen to non-mainstream group or artist. Yung mga hindi usual na mga nakikita nyo sa TV. Tapos, I started standing mga late 2004 or early 2005. Actually, hindi ko na masyado maalala. Pero around that time, naalala ko pa, <laughs> naabutan ko pa yung first song ng Super Junior, which is parang 2005 yata yun. So, ganun na talaga katagal. Tapos parang through the years, ayun, parang nag-appreciation talaga ako sa different genres ng K-pop. I mean, I guess hindi na lang yun K-pop. Meron na rin like yung mga alternative rock version or yung mga hip-hop nila, ganyan. Ano yung appeal sa'yo ng mga groups na yon? Bakit mo sila gusto? Bakit ka fan ng mga group na yon? Honestly, ako gusto ko both yung music tsaka yung personality nila. Like, I like watching variety shows featuring these idols. Tapos, yung K-pop din, trip ko talaga yung music nila. May habit ako na, ano, kapag pinapahinggan ko yung song, I search the lyrics, yung meaning ng song, tapos, after na natutuwa ako, kasi pasok talaga sa mga concept nila. Tapos, ang creative ng pag-present nila. Gusto ko din yung mga music videos nila, napaka-creative. Feel ko kasi a lot of effort talaga goes through each album or music release nila. Tapos, they always try to outdo themselves and improve each time my new release sila. And I feel like I'm presented with a new version of themselves each comeback. With regard naman doon sa personalities nila, nakakatuwa sila panoorin sa mga different projects nila. Magadin, maganda din kasi ngayon, may social media na, so may times they try to interact directly with fans, lalo na kapag nag-IG live sila or nag-V live sila. Uso na din ngayon kasi yung mga behind the scenes. So, nakikita mo kung paano nila, um, kung paano sila off cam. Tapos nakakatawa din kasi ma-realize mo na they're just people who really work hard to be where they are. Tapos, they're human beings din. People like you and me. And seeing the real and relatable side deepens my affection for them talaga. So, parang nagiging mas invested ako sa kanila. Sa tingin mo, ano ba yung pinagkaiba ng usual Pinoy artists sa K-pop artists? I think for Filipino artists, they focus more on raw talent. Parang they try to find finished products. Totoo na... They do try to improve their artist, pero iba yung process talaga sa Korea. Sa kanila kasi, may, merong may raw talent, syempre naman, pero some agencies try to find potential talaga more than the finished product. Yung tipong, even sa Tiny Spark, they do their best to bring out that potential. Tapos yung training period, kakaiba din, matira matibay, para siyang survival program, pero off camera at mas matagal. Parang talent alone won't help you debut. Kailangan ng tenacity, willpower, tsaka proper mindset talaga. Some idols, kahit magaling, ano, talagang hindi nila kinakaya yung training period. Tapos yung ibang idols, magaling lang sila kumanta sa simula. Pero after training, gumagaling din sila sumayaw dahil nga sa sheer hard work na they put into their craft. Tapos yung iba naman, baliktad. Tad-tad sa vocal training para mag-improve yung vocals, ganun. Tapos, meron din training on how they carry themselves. Tinuturo din, kaya once they debut, para silang mga veterano na talaga, pulido yung galaw. Sa atin kasi, we have lessons, pero I don't think we put the same amount of time in training than these Korean artists. Kaya for us, we tend to find talent na nahubog na. 
So, tingin ko yun yung main difference. Ano naman sa tingin mo yung pinagkaiba ng Western artists sa K-pop artists? I think, ano, similar din sa difference ng K-pop sa P-pop. For Western music, I don't think they go through the same training period as K-pop artists. So, baka dahil malakas talaga yung Western influence sa Pilipinas, kaya similar yung style natin. Tapos, I think, ano, iba din yung ano, eh, pag-hold nila ng mga concert. Parang marami din pakulo sa Western, pero kakaiba yung sa mga K-pop. Eh. May mga pa-segment pa sila, ganyan. Tapos, yung pag-hype nila ng crowd, parang nag-focus yung Western sa parang yung mga yun nga, pag-hype, parang high energy, ganyan. Sa K-pop, parang nakakatulong yung intense dance move nila, ganyan. Pero syempre, meron din silang parang hype factor na ginagawa. Pero, siguro iba lang talaga yung kung paano nila i-present siya on stage. Ano ba ang appeal ng P-pop? Yung main appeal ng P-pop for me is, naiintindihan natin yung lyrics. Tapos, may certain relatableness kasi yung mga topics nakakibat sa, ano, sa culture natin. May mga ibang K-pop songs kasi na kailangan mo ng context para magets Even with the English translation. Pero sa P-pop, more often than not, gets natin siya. Tingin ko din, yung isa pang appeal is, although we were inspired by cultures, not just Korean, but also Western culture, having our own songs, putting our own twist to the genre, and making it more relatable and personal talaga, um, drives the music home. Yung parang may feeling na, uy, gawang Pinoy ito, and it gives you a sense of pride and happiness listening to it. Parang, alam mo yun, parang tatak atin. Meron bang unique o natatangi sa P-pop? I think P-pop, while influenced by different cultures, still has its own unique charm. That charm, I think, lies within the lyrics and the culture imbued in the songs. If Tagalog yung lyrics, plus points pa yun. Although not all P-pop songs reach the same amount of success and some are better made than others, I think it's the attempt to inject our own color in it that makes it unique. Sa tingin ko, ganun naman yung music eh. Mahirap na unique ang isang kanta na tipong ikaw na ikaw lang talaga yung unang nakaisip ng style na yun. Pero it's when you put your own personality and soul into that song that sets it apart from the rest. And I think, P-pop, as it continues to grow, and as it gains more courage to embrace its Filipino aspect, it will, manis- it will manifest that uniqueness I mentioned. And then, when people hear these songs, they'll be able to say, Ah, P-pop yan. I think it just really needs time for that said uniqueness to be apparent. Anong mga P-pop group ang dapat natin sigurong abangan na susunod na si Sikat? na susunod sa SB19. Honestly, di ako masyado maalam sa Pinoy Pop aside from SB19. I mean, pagdating sa new groups, ay, yung mga, yung ngayong generation. Pero I'm sure, may other up-and-coming artist, pero I think, OPM as a whole is promising talaga. Like, maraming groups na magaling. Hindi ko lang kasi alam kung pasok ba to sa genre na P-pop. Kasi, parang, ewan ko, parang yung tema ng discussion ng P-pop is naka-revolve around sa parang similar sa K-pop, ba diba? Pero I think marami naman Filipino pop songs. So, I think we just need better marketing and better understanding of the international market talaga para yung OPM as a whole, ma-market natin kasi napaka-promising talaga. Siguro invest din in music videos kasi nakakatulong yung mga music videos sa K-pop sa tingin ko. Tapos, maganda din na i-utilize yung video streaming sites and other social media platforms. And syempre sana, more support din from us Filipino citizens. Honestly, malaking tulong yung mga ads din. Kasi yung mga music video na nakikita mo sa ads, personally, kapag maganda yung music video or maganda yung tunog ng music, I check the music video out whether it's from a group I know or not. Kaya visibility is key talaga. So ayun, sa tingin ko naman... Um, whether it be just P-pop or other OPM groups, marami talagang magaling. Marami tayong maririnig na music na mapapatigil ka tagad. So, maisip mo, uy, ang ganda niya na. And I think it's just a matter of time. And like sabi ko nga kanina, building up um, more, parang investing more in um, marketing para 
kumalat siya outside. Kasi sa atin, marami namang sikat na groups. Pero, hindi natin siya ma-share internationally. Kasi, hindi sila aware na may mga ganitong groups dito sa Philippines. So, I hope na yung SB19, gateway siya. Parang, aside from being interested in SB19, parang maging curious as a whole yung mundo sa ano ba yung kabuoan ng OPM. ba diba? Hindi lang yung pop side. Meron din yung mga rock, ganyan, or ballads, mga ganyan. So, hopefully, hopefully, na mas maging kilala pa yung other groups. Salamat sa mga sagot, Mikey. Thank you. Ito yung takeaway ko base sa naging diskusyon natin sa review na ito. Una, tungkol sa kantang Go Up na SB19. I think it will grow on me. I like empowerment songs. So, um, I think I'll give this song more listens. Hopefully, I'll learn to love it. To, or at least to like it. But definitely, I respect it. I respect the craft. I respect the hard work involved towards it becoming a reality. Now, as to K-pop and P-pop in general, tingin ko kailangan ko pa mag-research tungkol dito. I have to learn how a group is trained. I need to understand the sacrifices made. I have to understand the lyrical and musical choices and influences that K-pop artists and P-pop artists take inspiration from. Kaya, lalo kong palali- palalalimin yung kaalaman ko tungkol sa aspetong ito ng musika. Sana pag may bagong lumabas na K-pop inspired Pinoy group song, baka SB19 song ulit, baka bagong grupo, sana pag nireview ko yon mas maalam na ako sa P-pop at K-pop. I will continue to have an open mind. I definitely respect them. I know the hardships that they go through. And I hope that eventually I will learn to understand K-pop and P-pop. Even if I won't like them. Even if I won't love them. But at least, I hope to understand. So I think we'll stop here. Maraming salamat sa pagsubaybay. Pakipindot ang like, share, subscribe, at bell icon para masundan ninyo ang mga susunod kong mga video. Para malaman ninyo pag may bago akong upload. Maraming salamat. Manigong bagong taon. Happy New Year. See you in 2020.